Okay, I think we can get started. I'm hesitant to cut off Jason Danielli's beautiful voice, but good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am Todd Buonapane. I'm an equity member and Eastern Course Counselor. Welcome to the Actors' Equity In Memoriam Gathering. We are here to honor the lives of our union siblings that have passed on. First, I am coming to you from a law office in Midtown Manhattan, where we are negotiating the touring contract right now. Um, this law office in Manhattan, New York City, is the unceded lands of the Lenape or Lenape Hoking peoples. I wanna acknowledge that each person on the Zoom is zooming in from the ancestral lands of indigenous peoples. This acknowledgement demonstrates a commitment to beginning the process of working to dismantle the ongoing legacy, legacies of settler colonialism. Next, I will read the code of conduct that is read before every official equity gathering. Actors' Equity Association is committed to providing a respectful environment free of discrimination and harassment, regardless of an individual's race, religion, color, sex, age, national origin, sexual orientation, disability, gender identity or expression, ancestry, pregnancy, or any other characteristic prohibited by law. Because the union expects participants in its activities, events, and meetings to respect one another and to recognize and value individual differences, Actors' Equity Association will not tolerate discriminatory, harassing, disrespectful, or otherwise unacceptable behavior at any of its activities, events, or meetings. It adopts the following code of conduct and expects those that participate in any of its activities, events, or meetings to abide by it. In addition to this code of conduct, Actors' Equity Association has an anti-discrimination and anti-harassment policy and complaint procedure, which covers staff employees of the union. The code of conduct is not intended to replace or amend that staff policy. Along with the code of conduct, the vice chairs and I would like to set a tone of kindness. We are here to honor, celebrate, and tell a fun anecdote. We are joined by members, friends, and family members. Disparaging talk will not be tolerated. So welcome. Um, this is our third, and I read this every time, but I think it's important to reiterate. The reading of the names of deceased members began during the AIDS crisis in the 80s. As you may know, queer equity members were dying at alarming rates, and all too often, these members were dying alone. Equities Council decided to honor deceased members by standing and reading their names aloud. Then there would be a time for personal remembrances, stories, eulogies, and funny anecdotes. But for a time, this beautiful tradition was just for those attending the monthly council meeting. Thanks to a resolution in the Black Theater Matters Bill in the 2021 convention and a resolution passed by Equity Council, this tradition is now open to all. This is our third in memoriam gathering. Our first two were beautiful healing events. I welcome you all to offer your hearts and good energy to all gathered in this digital space and to the memories of our fellow union members that have passed on. So here we go. As we read these names, we ask you to offer us a little grace with pronunciation. We have done our best. Now I'm honored to introduce James A. Williams, Maureen Moore, and Kim Titus to read the names of equity members that have passed on between October 1st and December 31st of 2022. James. Member losses in October. Eugene Barconi. James F. Broderick. Robert Brown. Michael Callen. Judith Drake. Elise, sorry, Alice Duffy. Ed Dwyer. Sandy Edgerton. Richard Ferroni. Gary G. Fish. Pat Gorman. William Grivna. Joan Hotchkiss. Jen Myvenwy. Leslie Jordan. Max Julian. Dale Kaufman. Voigt Kimson. John Critch. 
Daniel Kruger, Bobby Lang, Angela Lansbury, Jillian Lindig, Richard Maw, Gloria McMillan, John Mennick, Rylan Murky, Elliot Myers, Mary Grace O'Gara, Janice Painshold, Don Holmes, Peter Siragusa, Gaynor Sturchy, Austin Stoker, R. Derek Swire, Chet Walker, Jeff Warren. Member losses in November. Morris Mark Alpern, John Aniston, Barbara Busby, Irene Cara, Jeannie Carson, Robert Clary, Kevin Conroy, Chuck Davis, Frank Davis, Stephen de Blasi, James P. Dooley, Mark Joseph Evans, Edward Lloyd Fleming, Max William Jacobs, Alice King, Depp Kirkland, Ernest Leroy, Grace McFarlane, Ron Massac, Douglas McGrath, Del McLean, John E. Moreland, Claire Nelson, Vance G. Ormez, Eldona Page, Sarah Ann Parker, Andrew Prime, Randy Reichard, Jay Rogers, Andy Sacken, Maria Santucci, Terry Sneed, Elaine J. Taylor, Colleen H. Tovar, Jennifer True, Al Tuanmo, Peter Van Hattam, Richard F. Volpe, Brian Young. Member losses in December. Daniel Adamian, Frank Adamo, Jean Alex, Kirsty Alley, John T. Argue, Don K. Baker, Stephanie Bizonette, Brian Calloway, Jan Canada Fritch, Patricia M. Dasco, Rick DeFuria, Ronald Dennis, Cliff Emick, John Fraser, Gerald Kerrigan, Carlos Juan Gonzalez, Douglas Hamilton, Rose Marie Himes, Naomi Carol Hirschhorn, Ellen Houseconnect, Scott Michael Jefferson, Micaiah Ernest Jennings, Cassie Jordan, David Kelso, Madeline Kern, Susan Kikuchi, Quentin Oliver Lee, Margaret Linney, Stuart Margolin, Diane McBain, Clapham Murray, 
Robert Neal. Paula Divin Clark. Helen Slayton Hughes. Robert W. Smith. Andy Thomas Anselmo. Robert Vogue Williams. Marilee Wallach. Thank you, Kim, Maureen, and James. Um, it always means so much to me to hear the name said out loud because I have a list and sometimes I don't even see a name until it's said out loud to me. And it always catches me by surprise. We have about 45 minutes left in our gathering and we would like to open the meeting to individual remembrances, anecdotes, and celebrations. Please try to keep your statements to about two minutes I haven't quite had to turn on the timer yet, but <laughs> I will if I need to. We want time for everyone who wants to speak to get the chance. And I'd like to remind you all of the kind and respectful and positive tone we wish to create in this meeting. If you would like to speak, please use the raise your hand feature. It can be found under the reactions tab at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Equity staff will then give you permissions to turn on your mic and camera. So, if you have something to say. Oh, I already have people lined up. Um, my first person I see is Mary Bidler Guerin. And I'm sorry if I said your name terribly wrong. Hi, thank you. You actually said my name exactly right. Uh, yes. It's uh, wonderful to be here. Thank you for doing this. Um, there's somebody who was not on the list uh, for December, and that name is uh, Michael John McGann. He was uh, on Broadway in Arsenic and Old Lace, has a long history at the Monomoy Theater and uh, the Great Lakes Shakespeare Festival, among others of the great theaters. He's um, also a film actor. Um, and um, uh, I wanted to raise him up again, Michael John McGann, a most wonderful friend and uh, a great talent. He passed away on December 23rd uh, in his apartment in uh, Brooklyn. And uh, um, I hope some of you know him. I know George McGuire knows him. He was just the most marvelous, uh, thrilling actor and mentor. Thank you for your time. Sure, thank you so much. And just to clarify, we do say these are um, deaths that were reported to equity. So sometimes someone has died in a certain month and it's reported to equity the month after and I imagine with the holidays. So hopefully we'll get to read his name in our next gathering for our January list. But thank, thank you, you so much. And anybody is free to talk about anyone, whether their name is read or not, if they've passed on. Um, next, I see Al Bandonis. Uh, thanks, Todd. Hi, everyone. It's Al, Al Bandonis, your second vice president. Thank you so very much for finding the time today to join in, to honor, celebrate, and uplift the memory of, of fellow members. Um, and Todd uh, and the entire committee, so very grateful for your work. Uh, I wanna speak for a moment about Don Took, who passed away on December 29th. He was the brother-in-law of former counselor, Marsha Waterbury. Uh, he was a prolific actor, uh, a face you would know from stage, uh, television, and film. Uh, he also was a founding member of South Coast Repertory. And I cannot think of a greater legacy to leave equity than creating jobs for fellow members. So to Don Tuck. Wonderful, thank you, Al. Uh, next on my list, Doug Carfrey. So when we read these, because I've gotten to be of an age, I begin to see a lot of my friends, people I've worked with, and I wanna just list a few names and then speak about a couple of people. Sure. These, these, these are people that all that I worked with, and they were all remarkable people. Sandy Edgerton, John Aniston, Ron Dennis, Naomi Carroll Hirshhorn, and Don Took. Um, when you work with somebody in a, in a theater setting, we become family. And each one of those people is a member of my chosen family. But there is a name that I have to bring up that is one of my dearest friends from my youth, from my chorus days in New York City, and that's Chet Walker. 
Chet and I have been friends for almost 50 years. And um, it he'd been sick a long time, and I knew that. But it's still hard when somebody who you grew up with, essentially, in show business uh, passes on. And I needed to mention that mention Chet Walker, who I'm sure a lot of you know and know all of what the things that he's done. But that I just need to say that and uh, not get too emotional because these things kind of get me that way. Thanks. You are more than welcome to be emotional here. Um, next, I see Deborah Gordon. Just got to unmute, Deborah. Here we go. I'm unmuted there now. There you go. Um, I just, I have a very dear friend who, who made, made everyone feel so special, whether they were acting with him or the neighbor or just met him on the street. His name was Ron Siebert. He, does, he died um, December 8th in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, after a... Um, certain amount of time he had an illness that he succumbed to. He was a very strong man, very wonderful actor. I know that he performed on Broadway when he was younger in uh, Iceman, Iceman Cometh and The Changing Room uh, with James Earl Jones. And um, there were actually two Seberts. There was Ron Siebert and Charles, Charlie Siebert was his brother, both from um, Kenosha, Wisconsin. And um, Charlie came to New York first and then Ron came after him. Um, and they both died within three months of each other, um, coincidentally. Uh, I don't think anyone in his family had, um, had been in touch with equity. So I, I felt it was my duty to mention his name. He's, he performed in many regional theaters uh, I know he performed in Pittsburgh a lot at the end because he lived there for the last uh, 25 years. But he also performed uh, at the Goodman Theater. He he performed at um, in Arizona and the Caldwell Theater and um, Florida Studio, uh, doing a lot of regional theaters theater work. And he loved doing Shakespeare. He at the end he was part of a Shakespeare company, and he did all the roles that he wanted to do. He did King Lear, he did Titus Andronicus, he did, uh, he was in Macbeth, he, he played um, many, many roles in the Shakespeare. I'm not going to list his uh, accomplishments, but because there's so many, but he was such a wonderful teacher. He also spent a lot of time towards the end working with uh, young people at um, Pittsburgh Public Theater doing coaching. And um, he, he coached all kinds of people that are now famous and uh, was a great um, uh, supporter of them and made them feel you know, comfortable and knew that when he saw a spark in a person, he just wanted to you know, uh, do what he could to make it flame. Um, and so I just wanted to not have his death be passed by without... Uh, someone mentioning Ron Siebert's name and Charlie Siebert. I'm sure uh, some of you of a certain age might have run into him over the years. Um, but he was a, a great partner on stage and off. Uh, no one was more supportive of him. And um, he unexpectedly died, even though he had been ill. But um, I just wanted to make sure that he was included in this memorial to uh, the union that was so important to him, the actor's equity that shaped his life and that he gave so much to. He loved theater. Thank you, Deborah. That was beautiful. Um, next, I see Diane Nicole. Diane, you there? I am. I was just trying to unmute. Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. um, Doug, thank you so much for speaking about Chet Walker, anyone who was here in New York, well, anywhere in the world and knows and loves Chet Walker. And I appreciate all you said about him. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to speak about Dan Kruger. Um, he is, he was a dear friend of mine um, early back in the seventies and we lost track of each other and seeing his name here 
brought back a memory. Um, he did a lot of work on Broadway as well as off. And he and I worked at a small dinner theater in New Jersey called the Meadowbrook Dinner Theater, which no longer exists. Um, at that time, there was an actor who would love to scream for their dresser out of their dressing room. And he, he being such a kind person, um, noticed that there was a small physical dresser in the green room and picked it up one day, knocked on her door and said, I'm delivering your dresser for you. Uh, and, and so I just, when I think of him, I, that, that's what I think about how, how he just tried to prevent chaos by doing these kind little things that everyone would love and laugh. But I'm sorry to see that he has passed he performed in a number of wonderful shows, The Lieutenant, Babes in Toyland, My Fair Lady, South Pacific, Finian's Rainbow, and so many more. Um, so again, thank you for all of this. Thank you, Diane, thank you. Uh, Jonathan Brody. Hi there. Um, I just wanted to speak briefly about Robert Clary, who I did not know. Uh, he passed away in November at the age of 96 after a long, long career in the business. Um, but what, uh, and you know, I knew him as probably many people of a certain age uh, do from the TV show Hogan's Heroes, where he played a prisoner of war, uh, French character in a German camp during World War II. And something, and I didn't know this until I read his obituary that he did not speak about till much later in his life, was that he had spent almost three years in a concentration camp in, during the war. He was the youngest of 14 children um, raised in Paris. His parents were Polish immigrants. They were a Jewish family. And uh, he was you know, a teenager, I believe, when he was sent to the concentration camp. He learned after the war that 10 of his siblings died um, and you know how he got over that tragedy and moved on with his life and had a you know a long i believe very wonderful career in the business is just so remarkable so i just wanted to encourage people to google him or look him up on wikipedia because it's a fascinating survivor story and i just wanted to share that thank you thank you fascinating that's great um nandita shinoi Hello. Hello. Uh, hi, Todd. So nice to see you. Um, <laughs> Good to see you. I just wanted to take a moment to uh, just remember Susan Cucucci, who I met doing the national tour of The King and I in 1997. And, um, you know, she was the keeper of the um, of the ballet from The King and I. And uh, she had taught it. She's Yuriko's daughter. So she was the, the daughter of the original Eliza on Broadway and um, and then she you know shared the choreography with us and it was really meaningful to receive it from her but she also she gave us these for opening night she gave us these little cutting boards that um, I have taken with me on every single uh, regional gig that I've done except this one because I'm so out of practice of going anywhere that I totally <laughs> forgot it and I was thinking oh I need Susan's cutting board. And, and then when I saw her name on this, I was like, oh, I, I totally hadn't realized that she passed. So anyway, um, she was a, a grand dom of, uh, of the dance world. She was a Martha Graham dancer as well. And, uh, you know, her legacy lives on. So just wanted to share that. Thank you. Wow. Um, Jane Hill. Hi, I think I'm, uh, I hope you can yep. hear me. Okay. We can hear you and see you, Jane. Great, thank you. Uh, I'm here to honor the memory of Joan Shirley, a longtime Actors' Equity member, and for more than 40 years, a member of the Del Arte International Company on touring ensemble and training program. Joan died in last February, a few days before her birthday. She is buried in a rural cemetery in Blue Lake, California, and uh, the school members and her students are preparing to do a memorial at gravesite. Most of you won't know Joan because she spent her life in, in the rural theater, residential theater, 
uh, and not on Broadway, but she was beloved and a very, very influential teacher. Her students, thousands of students now are in companies of their own around the world. <coughs> and she is someone who will be forever remembered for her uh, impact on the art form, particularly styles movement and mime. And she, uh, she's terribly missed and that won't change. And I'm sure that's true for all of you who are remembering people. These are people who impact our lives and stay with us forever as Joan Shirley will with me. Thank you for this opportunity. This is wonderful. This I never knew about this memorial annual thing and it's a wonderful thing. And it reminds us the impact that performers and equity members have around the world. Um, bless you all for your commitment to the arts. Thank you, Jane. We're doing it four times a year, every three months. And uh, I like to say that we actors and stage managers don't always lead the fanciest lives, but they are noble lives and we impact a lot of people. And that is shown so much here. Um, Maureen Moore. Maureen, you there? Yes, I am, forgive me. <laughs> um, my uh, first Broadway show, uh, in 1974, was playing opposite, well, her daughter, uh, to Angela Lansbury in Gypsy. That performance, till this, even to this moment, is burnt everything into my memory. 30, almost 30 years later, I had the uh, unbelievable fortune to stand by for the role of Mama Rose on Broadway. I confess there were so many moments that were sheer Angela's characterization in my performance. As a star, that's who every star should be. And as a human being, I know few who were as exquisitely luminescent. Thanks. Thanks, Maureen. Margot Moreland. Come on in, Margot. Hi. Hi Margo. Wow. <laughs> Follow that. Um, you know, I, I about Angela Lansbury, the grand dam. Uh, I agree wholeheartedly. I met her twice backstage, never got to work with her, but dear God, what an incredible human being. Just sheer talent and lovely, lovely soul. Uh, Maureen, I'm so jealous. Um, but I am here to talk, to say thank you, first of all, to Todd and the committee for doing this. I haven't missed one yet. And I am so, I'm going to get all emotional. I'm so incredibly thankful that uh you all decided to take this up because it is such an important part of honoring those that came before. And so I thank you. I am going to talk about two very specific, wonderful people from complete opposite sides of the country. Uh, Peter Saragusa, who was uh, started in Chicago uh, with the Sheer Madness fame and ended up in LA as a film, film guy. But one of the um, you know, for a large guy, he was one of the gentle giants, the sweetest man you will ever get to work with on stage and also off stage. Uh, many friends in LA you, uh, had him help with carpentry and uh, catering. I mean, he did it all. He was the Renaissance man. And he was one of those people that you could call at the drop of a hat and he'd be right there. So uh, it is a great loss to our community uh, to say goodbye to Peter Saragusa. And then I would also be amiss to not uh, say thank you to the velvet voice of Madeline Kern, who started out in New York and came down to my area, my neck of the woods in Florida, South Florida, and uh, was just a incredible teacher, a tri-union uh, tri member back when we had three unions 
after SAG, after SAG and Equity. Um, and she was on all three of the boards. She was a liaison member with me when I was the chair of the liaison uh, group down here. And she was just incredible. So I thank you. They will both be missed. And uh, thank you for doing this. Thank you, Margo. Uh, Ruthie Kramer. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you to uh, Todd and the committee, Al and the committee for doing this. Um, Jonathan Brody spoke very eloquently about Mr. Robert Clary. I would like to just add a few words about him since also knowing him from Hogan's Heroes when I was 12 years old, I was madly in love with him from the time I was 12 year old all the way on through my adult life. You wanted <laughs> anecdotes, you're gonna get anecdotes. Um, he did his first Broadway show in New York in 1952, New Faces of 52. Therefore, he had no been an equity member for 70 years when he passed away. And that's the detail I uh, wanted to slip by here about him. In terms of more anecdotes, I met him, I encountered him twice, once, when I ASM'd New Faces of 52 in 1982 at Equity Library Theater, he actually came to see it, but left before the end of the show, so I never got to talk to him. Um, ultimately, in 2000, I had met his nephew in passing here in New York, and his nephew introduced me, and after wanting to meet the man for 35 years, I finally did, and I admire him and his history to this day. Uh, if you don't know who he was, as Jonathan said, look him up. Thank you. Thanks, Ruth. I have the, the CD of New Faces of 52. <laughs> um, Patrick Harvey. Uh, hi, uh, I'm here to honor the memory of, um, of Elizabeth Betsy Parrish, who passed away on December 16th of last year. Um, Betsy's perhaps best known for originating the role of Jacqueline in La Caja Foal on Broadway. Uh, she also played in Death Trap opposite Marion Seldes over 1,000 performances. She was a protege of Stella Adler and um, taught for many years at the Stella Adler Studio of Acting, where she passed Stella's lessons on directly, as well as at Circle in the Square, the Met Opera Studio, and the Yale School of Drama, where her acting a song class was cited as Meryl Streep's favorite. Um, she really was a phenomenal actor. She was a quintessentially great instructor of performers, and she was committed to theater and to art and to inspiring young actors. Um, as a person, she was endlessly curious, and as an actor, she was incapable of giving anything less than her entire self to a role. And um, I think she's well remembered by the membership here. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you. Uh, Lindsay Roberts Green. You're muted, Lindsay. Very good. I said thank you. There we you. go. Now we can. Hi. Hi. And hello, everyone. My name is Lindsay Roberts Green. My husband, Tamara Green, is also on the call as well. And we just wanted to uplift our brother, Quentin Oliver Lee. Quentin, I love Quentin. <laughs> All three of us met on the Broadway First National Tour of Porgy and Bess where Quentin understudied Porgy. Prior to that, Quentin was not an equity member, but he um, was, I'm not gonna say discovered, but he was noticed by a casting director by singing in the subway. And One, Two, Skip a Few was starring as Porgy when he went on on the tour. Quentin's voice was phenomenal. His laugh was big and he brought joy to all, all, all of us. Uh, Quentin was on Broadway. He was in Prince of Broadway. And most recently this season, Quentin was in Caroline or Change. He's a phenomenal person and missed by so many of us. Unfortunately, he passed away on December 1st of 2022 from stage four cancer, but we um, celebrate his life. We continue to do so. We will be doing so for the celebration of life this Saturday on what would have been his 35th birthday. He is survived by his three-year-old daughter, Samantha, and his wife and fellow equity member, 
Angie Lee. So we love Clinton and so happy for this space to just share a little bit more about the phenomenal man and brother that we have lost. Thank you. Thank you, Lindsay. Wow. Um, Iris Lieberman. Hello, everyone, and thank you for doing this. It's so meaningful. Um, I want to con con her what Maureen said about Peter Siragusa. I worked with him in Chicago and a funnier, kinder man you would never meet. But what I wanted to speak about today was Larry McCauley, Lawrence McCauley through Actors' Equity. He died on December 17th and his family probably didn't notify you in time. Uh, he was uh, one of a kind, one of those people that you say they broke the mold. That was Larry. He was eccentric. He was odd, he was funny, and he was a great and dear friend. We did about seven or eight shows together in Chicago, and he we carpooled most of the time, and I got to know him really, really well. Um, he was known for leaving long messages on your answering machine. I would sometimes come home and there'd be six messages and I'd say to my husband, did Larry call? Um, and he would leave a message. And then uh, when the tape ended, he would call back again and leave another message starting just where he left off. Um, he was certainly one of a kind and he is very, very sorely missed. Uh, there will be a memorial mass for him this Saturday. And uh, I just wanted to mention Larry McCauley. Thank you. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you. Thank you, Iris. Um, well, I'll give a few more minutes if people want to talk, but um, I'm going to um, offer up two people that I never met. Um, Mr. Leslie Jordan and Mr. Jay Rogers. I think you all know who Leslie Jordan is. Really got famous on Will and Grace is Beverly Leslie. Um, and somehow became Instagram famous or TikTok famous, I don't know, during the pandemic and all the kids started liking Leslie. Um, and Jay Rogers, I discovered uh, through cast recordings of things like uh, When Pigs Fly and whoop de doo And I will never forget his Torch songs where he would sing love songs to Strom Thurmond and Newt Gingrich. And they were really, really, really funny. Um, and uh, for me, it was when I was training to be an actor and a lot of it was like, can you play straight? And to have um, people that I could look up to where your, your queerness was not a bug, it was a feature. It was something to celebrate in your performance. And uh, I will always look forward, look up to people like that because I think we're so good at celebrating that stuff now. And they put themselves out there before we were good at celebrating that stuff. So I'm really grateful for them. Uh, is there anybody else that would like, oh, I'm borrowing that from you when you're done. Um, is there anybody else that would like to speak? Okay, well then that brings us to the end. Oh, did someone just pop in? Oh, Josh, hi Josh. Come Hello, on can you hear me? Us. What? We can totally hear you. Um, I had no idea I needed this, so thank you. Uh, I miss my friend, Stephanie Bizonette. I only got to work with her very briefly. Uh, I choreographed her in the production of The Little Mermaid at the Muni, and I longed so much to have another opportunity, so. Forgive me, I'm a bit mad. I'm a bit upset and I had no idea I needed this space. So thank you so much. Um, yeah, just she was an incredible human being and a spirit unmatched by anyone I've ever met. So thank you so much. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, as um, this, that brings us to the end of our gathering. Um, very personally, I just want to thank you all. I have had a hard couple of weeks and this really lifts me up. And it's one of my, as a counselor, this is one of my favorite things that I get to be a part of. Am I missing a hand? Oh, there's more hands. Sharon, come on in. Oh, hi, am I on? We can hear you, we can hear you. Oh, oh, and now we can see you, great. 
Um, yes, um, I'm a longtime friend and partner of Anthony DeVecchi. And his, I just found out this morning that his name was um, on the October list. Um, but I was told I could come and just say a few words for him today. Um, he passed away on July 3rd, actually. And um, he was 89 years old, but he had an amazing career. Uh, was an Actors' Equity member since I think 1961 or 1962, so a, a long time. He actually started his career as a ballet dancer. He was premier dancer of the Metropolitan Opera, a soloist at American Ballet Theater, and he danced in many other companies, Jerome Robbins Ballet USA, um, Ballet Brio, um, Vladimir Dukadovsky's Empire State Ballet, and so on and so on. And then he received a phone call to work with Jack Cole on a show called Man of La Mancha. <laughs> um, and so that was his uh, leeway into Broadway. And uh, he was in the original cast of Man of La Mancha. And then he went on and did all of Jack's shows on Broadway and some other projects with Jack. And uh, he did uh, a lot of the subsequent um, Broadway productions of Man of La Mancha right up until the, the last one, which was um, um, Raul Julia and Sheena Easton at the Marriott Marquis. And uh, then um, that was his last, last Broadway show, but he also was in Tovadish, uh, Milk and Honey, um, Kelly, 13 Daughters, Mata Hari, which I think was read rather infamous as a flop. <laughs> um, but he did over 15 Broadway shows. And um, so after that last show with Raul Julia, he um, still taught, choreographed, staged all over the place. Um, so he had a very long and amazing career. And I was really lucky to have spent almost 50 years of that with him. Um, but he was an amazing man. So thank you. And I really appreciate what Actors Equity has been doing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. That was beautiful. And I think finally we have Dee Hody. Hi, Hi. Dee. Hi, Todd. Thank you. I didn't mean to be last. I wanted to speak about Angela Lansbury. She's been spoken of so beautifully before. And yes, she was a great star, but um, she was who I wanted to be when I grew up. I mean, that career, come on. But she was a very gracious lady. And I, I wish I could call her a close friend, but I would go backstage and see her every show she did. The first time I actually met her was backstage. She came backstage when we were doing City of Angels. I have a picture which is not with me now, of Randy Graff and Kay McClelland and I think Rachel York and myself with Angela. And we're all like, oh my God, this is Angela Lansbury. <laughs> Fast forward, I always wanted to play Mame. I finally got the chance two or three times. Uh, and uh, when she was honored by the uh, Dramatist Guild, I believe it was, um, they reenacted scenes from all of her shows, musicals. And uh, somebody dropped out at the last minute and they asked me to do It's Today to do the opening, which opened this gala in the ballroom, the whole thing. And there was Angela. I was terrified, <laughs> but it turned out great. I talked to her afterwards. And P.S., although I saw her in years uh, after that, after shows and things, her shows, my shows, um, she wrote me the loveliest thank you note, which I have to this day. It should be in a silver frame, I don't know, in my bathroom where Randy Graff would say, everyone will see it there. <laughs> Just the most beautiful, oh, D, it was lovely to blah, blah, blah. It was just, you know, and I don't say that to pat myself on the back. I say it to pat her on the back because she was that kind of lady. As Randy said to me, Graf said to me in when we, at City of Angels, which was 1989, 90, um, she said, you know why we want to be here when, when we grow up? She's a movie star. She's a, she's a Broadway star. She's a TV star. And she has her own exercise video. <laughs> it was the 80s, you know. That's what I have to say. Anyway, thank you. I'm sorry to be kind of late to the party, but I, I remembered that moment. So thank you all. And thank you for doing this, Todd, and your committee. We should all get together in Times Square and do Angela Lansbury's workout video. And they should like play it on one of the big jumbotrons. I think that would be That's hilarious. amazing. <laughs>
<laughs> um, I have a few people that have popped in uh, uh, that don't have hands up. Kimberly, did you want to say something? No, you're just popping your faces in. And Nancy and Deborah, you're great. Okay. All right. So I don't want to, I don't want anyone to feel like they missed their chance to talk. So as I stated, this is our third ever Equity in Memoriam gathering. Um, and we're going to keep doing them every three months. So keep your eyes out. Tell your friends. If you have advice on how we can do this better, please feel free to email me at my equity email. I think Javon has that for you. It is bibuanapane at actorsequity.org. I think there's a screenshot for that. That's me. It's good bread in Italian, ladies and gentlemen, buonapane. Um, so email me if you have any ideas, um, anything at all. I, I want this to continue to grow because like, I know how healing it is for me and I would love to just bring it to as many members as possible. And if you have friends that missed it, it was recorded and it will be put on um, in our member portal so people can watch it later, which is great. So thank you for joining us. I hope to see you in three months and have a lovely Monday evening. Thank you so much.